Tony, that's a, a tough team and a tough style to defend. You got better as the game went on at that end. Did you tweak anything as the game went on or just stick to the Not floor? defensively, a couple things offensively, but defensively, yeah, they're constant motion. They run some of the best off-ball screens where there's, we call them stagger screens, where they wrap or they'll go through the gate or they back cut you. All five guys are capable of shooting the three. You saw that with their five man with Aldridge. And um, they just put a lot of pressure on you, so you have to be so alert. And so we were talking about being continuous and fight through screens, help your partner, and then get back. And it's just it's going to be that way. And um, it was probably a team that you needed some time to, to prepare for. If, if you're not prepared for how hard they run their stuff and the different actions, they're going to get wide open looks. And they still have to make them. Um, but I thought they, uh, they run great stuff. You don't get a court named after yourself, Coach McKillop. Uh, for nothing, he's he's a heck of a coach, and um, he uh, he does a, a terrific job. And those guys play the play hard in the right way. Chris, coach, on the offensive end, you got a lot more curls into the paint in the second half. What was behind that adjustment, and it seemed to work? Yeah, we just thought that um, we needed to try to be aggressive that way. We moved a couple of guys, our screeners, and tried to open up the lane, and either off the bounce, off the dribble, attack it, or um, depending upon how they were playing. At first, they were. We'd set our screens and they would shortcut them. So we were trying to work the baseline. And then when they started chasing our screeners, similar to what they do, we started trying to get to the elbows and uh, make some plays and either look for the shots, spray it out. And I thought you know, Nigel gave us a terrific lift in the first half. And Devin was really good in the second half. Uh, and Kyle got rolling as well. So when you look at three guys, 2019 and 22, um, they made a difference. So I, I really liked, um, I liked how assertive they were and six turnovers. You know, Davidson isn't a high pressure defensive team, but um, we took what they gave us and I thought we had just the right pace and it always is good when you make, you know, 10 to 19 threes. Tony, just talk a little bit about the impact that Nigel had, especially creating points yes, off turnovers. For sure, yeah, you see his speed and his burst and uh, getting down the floor, a couple steals. I thought he was, was really sound and really good that way defensively as well as Again, hitting the three, touching the paint, transition buckets. So I was really happy for him. And again, that's that's kind of our team this year. Sometimes it's a, a different guy, but um, I liked what I saw from him, and we needed it all because that score isn't indicative of how much of a challenge because they can score in spurts. And I thought, for the most part, we held in there. I look forward to watching the tape on this one to see, did they just miss open shots? Were they a guys open lot, or did we, for the most part, make them earn? I don't think in even in high school, Devin was the primary scorer on his team. And certainly early in his career here, that hasn't been his main role. Has, has he had to change his mindset a little bit to become more assertive like he's been this year? I think it's just, you know, again, I've mentioned a lot. What, a, what an example of a guy who just has gotten better and has been steady and understands his game. And we need him to be more assertive. And he's doing it, you know, kind of step by step and even at times this year, when, when we've needed it, it's been there. At times, he knows when to be patient, and that's part of that experience. But um, it's a guy who's paid the price on developing his game and, and all of those things. Something going on here. Everybody's looking up at the TV. What do we got going on here? Oklahoma, Wichita State, and someone else. Oh. How would you describe I can't that? stop looking at Doug's sweater. That's impressive, Doug. That's, that's catching my eye more than the game. Uh-oh. Yeah, he hasn't asked a question, so uh-oh. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, how would you describe DeAndre's role? I know he kind of he played in the first half, didn't get in the second yeah. half. Yeah. Wh 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 where does he kind of stand right now? Yeah, he's just got to keep working and keep battling. He, he and Jay, you know, they just they work. And um, again, I, look, you look at the stat sheet, and I think the right guys were out there tonight to to be successful. Seemed like Isaiah had a uh, pretty big impact on with a lot of things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Take us through what you saw from him. That's typical Isaiah. Um, someone sent me a stat. Uh, was it the plus minus that he is? Um, you guys maybe know it. Um, I just got a text. He's the most. He's at number one. Like guys in the past, it was Draymond Green when he played for Michigan State, Anthony Davis, and then this year in college basketball. I think it's his plus minus. Eric, did you send me that or someone did? I. Uh, oh, you guys. Okay, I just said that. I don't even know what it means, you know, but I know he's really valuable and he does a lot of things. So, okay, um, and I don't, I don't know what the meaning. I'm not sure what they used in those that statistical um, measurement. He does it all. He had to guard Aldridge most of the game, and that's a lot of pressure. That guy's averaging 20 plus, takes 
18, 20 shots a game. So that's impressive. He's such a screener. He kept plays alive. And, um, you know, again, eight rebounds and just steady. He's, he's, um, he knows how to play. He knows what we need. He knows himself. Devin understands himself. That is a powerful thing when a player understands who they are as a player and as we continue to learn who we are as a team. Because we early had some transition buckets, let them get out, a couple silly turnovers. We weren't sharp. And you're not going to beat good teams if you're slacking that way. But Isaiah is about as clear uh, in his mind of how he needs to play for us. Tony, in your eye, does Kyle draw so much a defensive attention that it's going to open things up for other guys? I think so, yeah. I thought he was a little premeditated at times. He was, I'm driving, I'm going to shoot that. And then I thought he settled in for the most part. Um, but he, we of course, want him to be aggressive. But the way he moves and you got to track him and, you know, again, when he sucks people into the lane, we try to open up the lane, he can either make the next play or his shot is so quick that that opens it up for everybody. And then when Devin starts cooking like that, you know, those, then it's, okay, who do, you, who do you pick? We're screening hard for our guys, and we start dropping some passes to them. So when you have three perimeter scorers that are rolling a little bit and can shoot it, dribble it, it becomes hard to guard. But Kyle draws a ton of attention for sure. Coach, you obviously had the exam break, but you also only have two games here, or three games in this little stretch, and then another break. Can December be a time to figure some things out about yourself with with that many gaps in the schedule? Or is of course it is. Um, but I talk to our guys. It's you know, yeah, you make little adjustments, but it's not about maybe doing things differently. It's about doing things better. And I think that's that's where we're at. We start at the season, and we use this phrase a lot. I say it all the time. First, let's eliminate losing. What do we have to do? We have to be great in our transition defense, our ball handling sureness, and our rebounding. So let's be great in those areas. Sometimes as you get into the season, you say, OK, we've got to adjust and make all these changes. Let's, I said, if you guys want to have a, a really good year, then you've got to be great in those areas. And let's not forget that. And um, just being better maybe in certain areas and little tweaks. Um, but uh, you know what's coming with our league. You know, I, I saw the Virginia Tech play in Kentucky. You just look around at the scores. This league, well, you have to be ready and sound because nothing but sound, tough play will will get it done, and we understand that. Um, Ty's been a little bit of a slump for a few games. What's his headspace like? What are you telling him? What's your message to him to get him out of that? Yeah, I mean, again, he's just got to lead and be good. I think he's, you know, he's not feeling great. He's got, you know, he's hobbling a little bit, but um, there's times that you know I've got confidence. I mean, his he played. 17 minutes. He's smart. He moves the ball. He knows how to get people involved. I think he just keeps doing the things he does well. And then shots will fall. You just keep, he works out on it practice. So um, that's part of, you know, for players, for college athletes, is when they're not either getting to play as much or they're not hitting their shot or they're in a little slump in certain ways. Will you keep staying true to who you are as a player and work through it? That's just part of life. That's part of being a good player. So does valuable things that don't show up. But um, but he wants this team to win, and he'll do whatever it takes. So I'm confident of that. Last question. All right. I've been waiting. All right. So you're down 18-11 with nine minutes left in the first half. Did that have anything to do with the uh, 11 days off? Um, I would. I, I hope not. I mean, you can look at it a bunch of ways. You know, we got. West Virginia, they jumped on us. I mean, I guess um, trying to think of some games that we have to be sharp right from the start. Uh, and I think sometimes we've gotten put ourselves in a little bit of a hole in certain games, not all games, but um, could I mean, you know, I haven't played for 11 games. Maybe you're a little rusty, but I, I thought there were some careless mistakes that I wouldn't blame on the break. I just blame on not being ready and sharp. But um, look at it how you want. They were sharp. Didn't affect them to start. Thank <laughs> you.